Good evening, YouTube. So, today we're going to talk about how to check a responsive person in CPR and first aid. I'm going to tell you right on the scene, the first thing you want to do when you're ready to help any person responsive or non-responsive is introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Anita. So, I'm going to do a check on you. Are you okay? What's your name? This is what I'm going to do. You want to introduce who you are, what you're going to do, so this person is aware. If this person is a child, you want to gain their consent from the parent, if available. Now, the first thing we're going to do when you get ready to go to a, you know, a uh, situation with a person and check and see if they're responsive, first thing that you want to do is to interview them using sample. Um, and this is just a questionnaire for the person or the bystander. Sample, signs and symptoms. Allergies, medications, pertinent medical history prior to the incident, um, the last food that the person may have eaten or drink or drunk, excuse me, prior to the, the emergency situation, and then E, the events that led up to it, were they dizzy, were they feeling like they were faint, were they hot, those type of things. All this is information that is very, very important to have when you're getting ready to do your assessment, which is assessment is step two. The first thing you want to do is do a head-to-toe assessment on adults, toe to head on a child. Because children tend to have stranger anxiety. They want to know what you're doing before you're doing it. So when you're checking the head, you want to check the head, neck, eyes, nose, ears. Never move a person that you feel has a neck injury because you don't want to cause more damage. And every time you're checking your assessment, always check to see and make sure that there's any type of pain. So you want to check the neck, you want to check the shoulders for any pain, ask them any type of places that it may be hurt. Then you want to go into the chest and abdominal. Ask the person, say, hey, breathe in. Blow out some air. And see if there's any type of trouble breathing or pain breathing or if there's any type of irregularities in their breathing. Then you want to go on to the hips and check and see if there's any type of pain that may be there. Ask them where it may be. Sometimes the hips are dislocated or broken, you can tell because they're not symmetrical. Then you want to go on to your feet. And your legs, see if there's any pain. What's the color of the skin as you're looking? Is it blue? Is it bruised? Is there any possible bleeding or laceration? Ask the person to wiggle their feet and their toes. Then we want to go into the upper extremities of the arms. See if there's any type of bruising, any pain or injury as you're touching and assessing. Never do anything that's going to cause additional harm. Ask them to move their wrists and their fingers, their hands and their fingers. Once you've done your head-to-toe assessment, <laughs> then you are ready to provide care because you have information about their body and everything else that was important that you did in your sample. Once you've done that, you are now able to call 911 if you haven't already and if it is necessary. And as you begin to provide the care needed for the injury that has been caused, then you want to make sure until help arrives that you have someone that's flowing there. You want to, as they're there, and you're giving them care after you're giving them care, then the next thing that you want to do is just continue to watch and make sure that there's no signs of the person, the person, symptoms, signs, or body or condition getting worsened. And those are the basic steps for knowing how to check a responsive person. Thank you.